Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I have so far. Hope you and your loved ones are all healthy and safe. I know we're living in a really, really bizarre and scary time right now. And um, I know I skipped a video last week, which I posted about in the community section of YouTube. So some of you were notified about that, but probably very few because I don't think everybody goes and looks in there. Frankly, I just really, with what's going on, um, I really lost motivation to make a video last week. And uh, I think I owe you an apology for that because I think a lot of us really need a distraction right now. Metal detecting is a fantastic distraction, especially when most of us are stuck at home, quarantined and crawling out of our skin. <laughs> um, it's a great time to get out in the woods, be safe, don't go with other people. I'm going on a rant here. Um, anyway. <laughs> So in this week's episode, I did some more woods hunting at some cellar holes that aren't too far away from where I live. Day one ended with kind of a mystery find. Day two, I went back to look for it. I meant to say look for the rest of it, and I can't set up my lighting studio right now because I need to get the heck out of here. This is a good one, guys. Let's hop in. All right, so about six inches down on this plug, um, I got a 14 signal. You can kind of see, if this wasn't in the way, a little edge there. And I believe we have a butch in. Yes, we do. And I can already tell it's Tom back. You can see it shining through. And it's cleaning off very easily. <laughs> awesome. Per usual, I am a magnet for these, but they're pretty common at uh, 18th century sites. So I'm not surprised. I'm just working along the edge of a cart road right there. You can kind of see where the water is. The road is filled with water. Working my way, way down there, about a mile or so to a site that I've been to before. And uh, yeah, I've only been swinging five minutes. So that's a good sign. All right, so I got a 15 signal about four inches down. Could have sworn it was gonna be a shotgun shell. But I took a quick peek at it. And I think it's, yep. That's a pewter button. Oh, look at the design. Look at that. That's my fanciest pewter button. I'm gonna brush this off really, really gently, and then I'll show you another uh, close-up of this. Wow, that's awesome. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I cleaned off the button as much as I'm comfortable doing out here in the field because it is pewter, so as you know, that's very brittle. Uh, the shank is missing the loop. There's still just a little nub in there. But that truly is the fanciest pewter button I think I've ever found. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, we'll keep moving. Okay, I can't believe this. The cellar hole is right there. I have hunted here a few times. I found a couple of coppers, one of which was a 1723 Woods Hibernia. Um... And then kind of back that way on the path coming up, I found a really slick coin. I got a really, really iffy signal about six to eight inches down there. And I flung it out. And if that's not a copper, I don't know what is. So we're gonna see what this is together. Oh, it's my first farthing. Oh my goodness, it's a KG2 farthing. Oh, it's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna be gorgeous, look at that. Look at that green patina. I've been waiting for a farthing for about three years. <laughs> this is incredible. I can't believe the condition of this. 1749, bang on, oh my goodness. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's a huge day maker. I can't believe I heard that. I can't believe I barely heard it, guys. And just as an FYI, I'm running recovery speed of three today on the Equinox 600, which is the maximum on the 600. And that's paying off in dividends. I can't believe how gorgeous this is. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, I'll brush it off real quick and get right back to you. But wow, that's a day maker. Would you look at that? That is one sharp, sharp farthing, especially for King George. I mean, the date doesn't usually come through like that. Wow. 
And there's the front. It didn't brush off quite as well, but I'm not going to brush it any more than this. I'm going to be very careful with this coin because it's absolutely, it, it, it's just exquisite. And the Woodside Bernie I dug over here was actually um, in similar shape, but not quite as good as this. Absolutely phenomenal. All right, if I find anything else, I'll be back with you. All right, next signal was not quite as exciting as that amazing farthing, but I figured I would show it anyway. This is, it's either called a buckshot or a bucking ball. I can't remember. But anyway, this would have been, there would have been three of these stuffed down the barrel of a musket along with the musket ball. So that rang up about 11 or 12. And it's just interesting that I'm finding really anything at this site. I've hammered it to death, but just changing the settings on your machine can make all the difference sometimes. So having a great time out here today. Well, I just got an 11 to 12 signal about six inches down. You kind of see it there. It looks like a button. And that's going to be what it is. It kind of looks like... Let's see here. I'm gonna blow the dirt out of the shank just a second. Okay, so that's a very old button. That's actually a drilled shank. So that could be late 1600s to mid 1700s would make total sense based on where we are. And the front, you know, I feel like that would have had a pewter face to it or maybe there was a stone in there because it's almost a cufflink size. And with the wear pattern there, I feel like that's actually what it is. So I guess I'll poke around and see if there's a stone in here somewhere or just another part to this cufflink. I'm gonna call it a cufflink. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm taking a path out of the woods that I have not been down in probably over two years now. I heard a 10 to 11 on the surface and I figured eh, it's probably a small bullet. I'll clean it up, get my due diligence out here, but it's not. <laughs> it's some kind of charm. Almost looks like a little horse or something. And there's a broken bale on the top. Yeah, it's a little horse. That is too cool. <laughs> and I almost put it in the junk pouch because I couldn't really make out what it was. I'm glad I cleaned it off a little more though. Well, that is very different. Okay. Okay, so that's the end of day one. I know I said I had a mystery find, but here's the thing. I didn't film it because I thought it was garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was in an area, uh, you know, near that cellar hole. I found a lot of bullet casings before, a lot of evidence of hunting, um, specifically deer probably, based on where I live. And so I thought that this little doohickey here was a snuff tin lid. Uh, this almost went in the garbage. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you check your junk before going ahead and just <whistles> discarding it. You really don't want to do that. I am very glad in this case I posted this to the group ID Me on Facebook and people post their metal detecting finds there to see if um, anyone else from the community has dug something similar or knows what it is. In this case, <laughs> um, this is actually a pretty rare piece. I have seen maybe one or two of these dug up before but a different style so that's why I didn't know exactly what this little lid was. Um, it is actually an 18th century pocket sundial lid. So I'm going to throw up an example of an excavated one right now that's complete. So on the left side there you can see um, the pocket sundial itself and on the right side you can see a remarkably similar almost exact match to the lid that I found. Going a little bit further here, this is one that was not dug. So this is how it would have looked when it was first dropped. Now, knowing what I had <laughs> um, and that it's exceedingly rare, naturally, I really had to go look for the rest of it. This was a shallow, loud, obnoxious signal. So that's kind of why I thought it was trash because it was so shallow. Well, as I've said before to many people and to myself, uh, depth is not an indicator of age. It truly isn't. So I went back out a couple of days later, tried to find another loud, obnoxious signal like this, and then this happened. Well, I'm out on a search and rescue mission today. I'm looking for the rest of that pocket 
uh, sundial that I found the other day, and I was looking for a loud, obnoxious signal, and I found one. This plug is ripped way up because there were so many rocks, so many roots, and I didn't find the sundial yet, but that looks like a nice big fat copper. So let's see what that is. King George the First, I can already see it. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> see if we can get a date off of this guy on the back. Not as of right yet, but this is... Actually, I'll get back to you with the dates. I can't even remember. I think it's like 1714 to 1724. But, or 1727, but I, I feel like I can't remember right now. So I'll wipe this off just a little bit, get right back to you, recheck the hole, all that fun stuff. That's awesome. All right, I brushed this off just a little bit. I can't really make the date out right now, um, but I think this might actually clean up all right. We'll see what happens. The obverse is not quite as nice, but given this is a 300-year-old coin, I guess that's forgivable. <laughs> So, oh, that's awesome. Okay, back with you on the next. All right, well, I've got something kind of interesting going on right now, so I figured I'd show you. It's not super duper exciting, but it shows there are still good signals here. So, first and foremost, the home is right back there where the tree has fallen over. That's where the cellar hole is. So I'm working behind it right now in an area I have not really touched before. And I'm up to... <laughs> like four of these and these are rivets and the leather is still intact so yeah i've got one two three four and i'm still working on a couple of signals in here so it'd be interesting to see if this was actually like an entire saddle and maybe the um the saddle pommel is still here which would be really exciting because i want one of those so anyway shows there are still some good signals here and i'll be back with you if i find some more well, sorry I didn't pull this out of the hole with you, but it's a beautiful, tiny little fragment of a knee or shoe buckle frame. Ring up about a 13. I was convinced I'd be finding a little bit more of it, so that's why I didn't film this tiny piece. I was going to show you everything I found, but that's it for now, so nice piece of history. Well, I'm on my way out of the woods. The sun is definitely going down, but I got an 18 signal about six inches down here. And I just pulled out a nice big fat musket ball. Looks like a 69 caliber to me. So that's pretty cool. Looks like it's also dropped. Let me get that in the sun for you a little better. Dirt's really caked on there. But you can see, oh wow, that's a cool one. You can see the sprue right there at the top and then the seam going along. Let's see. Obviously I'll put the cleaned up photos up there for you, but the sprue, shows where it was poured into a mold with several of you know several other compartments next to it for other musket balls so it's probably the most pronounced sprue that i've ever found on a musket ball and i like it well everyone that's the hunt for this week's video really hope you enjoyed it as always if you loved this video please go ahead and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that you're notified of every new upload i put out on youtube it would really mean a lot to me because it definitely helps the channel. And with all that said, let's hop into the wrap-up. Okay guys, so heading into the wrap-up really quick here. We've got our 69 caliber musket ball that I dug right at the end of the day. Nice thick tom back button here. That was the first dig in the video, I believe. Let's see, a beautiful, beautiful pewter button with a really nice pattern on it. Definitely my nicest one to date. Um, that's an oldie, that's probably like mid 1700s, maybe late 1700s. Um, that little buckle fragment, the way I could tell it was a knee or a shoe buckle is because of the pin right there where it would have gone in. Um, I'm thinking knee buckle because it's so small, but I don't really know, very tough to say. That little cuff link with the drilled shank, which is indicative of a style from the late 1600s to mid 1700s. And again, it is missing the face. It was probably a pewter face, could have been a stone, still don't really know. We've got our cute little pewter horse. Not really sure what that was from. It looks like a charm, I don't think it's a pendant, um, and I have no clue how old it is, so open to suggestions there. Our really super cool pocket sundial lid, colonial pocket sundial lid. Um, boy, I wish I could find the rest. 
but I have access to this area and I go there a lot. So hopefully one day I will trip over that loud, obnoxious signal. And this time it'll be the sundial. We'll see. And now moving into everyone's favorite part, the coins. So that KG1 cleaned up very well. Very legible date there, 1724. It's probably my second nicest one. I have another one that's uh, got a lot of green patina left on it and it's just beautiful. It kind of looks like this one. <laughs> that absolutely gorgeous farthing. Um, I am leaving the verdigris slash patina, whatever you want to call it. It's really verdigris, which is copper disease. Uh, I'm leaving that on there because it looks pretty nice. I might strip it down eventually, but I don't know. I kind of like the way it looks like that. Um, and this, just for fun, I wanted to include, this is the Woods Hibernia I was talking about that I dug from that same site. And you can see that it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this one I did clean very aggressively. I took the Andre's pencils to it and completely stripped it of all the verdigris because it was pretty green like that one. Um, and I love the results. So just forget I would show you that to show you the condition of the coins that come out of this amazing site. And with that, stay safe. Stay healthy, use common sense, and we will see you next week.